If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. In this lecture, we are going to take a look at an example of debugging in the Unreal Editor. So here I am in my project. I'm going to open my content drawer and open one of my blueprints like my food blueprint by double clicking on it. This takes me to the blueprint editor. You can access debugging in the header of your blueprint. So you have to select a debug object such as one of the food items. So you'll notice all of these objects are of the same class as our current class. So I'm going to select one of the objects like food nine. Once you have your object selected, you can jump to that object in the level by clicking on your magnifying glass icon. And then you'll notice it will zoom in in the actual level to that object. Here, now I have my object selected that I want to debug. So when I press play, it's going to start my game and you're going to see pulsating active wires when your script executes if any of these events get triggered. So we can go to our other blueprints such as the game UI. We can inspect them as well and we're still in play mode. I'm going to go into my top down blueprints and inspect the character, right? If I have any events in there as well as the controller, we can inspect the simulation mode and the game mode. We can inspect the simulation mode of the game mode. So we have our construction script, our viewport, our event graph. So if we trigger one of these events, then we'll see that their active wires will begin to pulsate. For example, when the event begins play. So I'm going to stop the game here and I'm going to play again and the game widget nodes will be executed the first time. If we had a loop here then we would see the pulsating wires. So I can right click and I can create an event tick right and then whenever the game runs I can call print string just print out hello. So I'm going to now hit run. If you want to see these changes executed you have to save and compile your new changes then you can hit run. So this script is now going to be running every tick. So we can inspect our game. So I'm going to run this and then I'm going to just inspect the game and we do see hello being printed out. Okay, great. So this tells me that this is indeed running and this event is called every frame, All right? So that is telling me I can indeed execute this event tick every frame of the game. If we want to see the active wires, however, you have to select your debug object. So I'm going to go into my current top-down game mode. Now our debug object, when we hit play, we can select the spawned object. So before we hit play, we don't have any object to select because the object is only created once I hit play. Then the game mode is created and I can select that. Now you see your active wires. So these active wires are shown if some execution is currently happening. So this execution is currently happening because the event tick event is called every frame of the game. Other events only happen when the game begins, such as event begin play, or when an event is triggered. So the active wires will occur if the current execution is actually running. So that is an example of how you can debug Unreal Blueprints in the Unreal Editor. We can hit stop. Notice now we have our spawned object selected by default. I will see you in the next lecture. In this lecture, we will learn how to build a breakpoint and a watch in the Unreal Editor in a blueprint. So I'm here in my game. I'm going to pop open my blueprint such as food or I can go back to my top down game blueprints and open up the game mode where I currently have an event tick. So running every frame of the game, I'm printing a string and you can see that is executed 
if we hit play in the game. I'm going to go into the game and you can see it's all being logged out there. If you put your game mode blueprint window to the side, you can see hello is being logged out. If we select a blueprint object as our debug object, then we can see the active wires to show us what events are currently happening, what execution nodes are being run. So this is our starting point. How do we add a breakpoint? Well, we can add a breakpoint to a node by selecting the node, right click on the node, and then add a breakpoint under the breakpoints category. You can also toggle, which will add or remove a breakpoint. So I'm going to add a breakpoint. This puts a solid red octagon in the upper left hand corner of the node. Now if I try to run the game, you'll see there will be a big red arrow on top of my node. As well, if I go into my game mode, you'll notice we'll have a black screen. That's because I put a break point as soon as the first event tick occurred which means the first frame of the game cannot be run because I have a breakpoint. So I stopped the game, I paused it right before the next frame. So the event is not even finished beginning play. We're still in that phase because I stopped the game immediately. I can step through, however, with these breakpoint icons at the top right. You can locate the current active node by clicking on the first magnifying glass icon. This will focus on the current active node. So this is where we currently are at because I put a breakpoint here so it will stop right before this node is executed. You can use the next icon to step into the next node to be executed. So you can click this. This steps from event begin play into the first event tick. But then it will immediately reach the breakpoint again because event tick will run each frame of the game. So if you put your window to the side, you'll see the game has begun because we finished event begin play. However, the next frame has not been executed because the next frame, I put a breakpoint on the next frame. There's another icon step to the next node to be executed in the current graph. So we have step into the next node and then step to the next node. So we can step to the next node Right, you'll notice nothing will change in your window because you're just going to that next node. You're not running it just yet. So the point of the third icon is to show you what is the next node. And you can keep going there to see what will be the next node. There's also step out, which is going to step out to the next node. And it will continue the game. So in your game here, you can see we're still in the same phase. If I click step out to, right, still the same phase. If I click step into the next node, then in the game, we get another frame that's being run. And we can put these side by side, this blueprint editor, and then we can use these, this expanded window to step into. So we can keep stepping into our next frame of the game. We could also hit F11. If you want to advance a single frame, then you can use the icon that's right next to the play icon to advance a single frame. You'll notice printing string. It will print it sometimes double or single. So if I click to advance a single frame, we get hello, then we get nothing, then we get hello, then we get nothing, then we get hello, hello. So that is because the printing here can be a bit behind the event tick. So you can hit to advance a single frame with that shortcut icon. So we can see that we are stepping into each next frame. And at each frame, we're printing our string. Sometimes the function is behind, so that's why it can be a bit delayed sometimes because the event is running fast every frame of the game and games run at 30 frames per second. So it can take time for the function to keep up printing that quickly. All right, so here we now know how to create a breakpoint. 
Now let's say we want to remove the breakpoint. Well, let's stop our play, stop the execution. We can right click on our blueprint and select remove breakpoint or disable breakpoint. So disabling is going to allow us to enable it back if we had certain locations or if we had certain details for the breakpoint. We can keep them or we can just completely remove the breakpoint and reset. So that is an example of building a breakpoint. Now what about a watch to keep track of blueprint node pins? Well, you can select a pin like in string hello. Let's select one of those pins, right click on the pins name. And here we want to watch this value. So if the value can be watched, then you can watch its value. So we could make this into a variable such as promoting to a variable and one will be created for us by default. Okay, so now instead of just printing a literal value, we're printing out a variable value. Then on this variable, we can right click and we can watch the variable value. So for this, I have to click on the pin. So make sure you click on the pin itself and then you can watch this value. So if we don't have that variable, we can't watch the value because it's a literal value, but if we promote it to a variable, then we can right click on the pin and watch this value. This blue icon will get added to your name of the variable right next to the pin name and next to the variable name itself. So now that we have created this watch, we can run our game again and we can see watching string in string zero hello. So now we're watching the value of the variable. So it will tell us at every point of the running what is the value of the variable. So the value never changes in this case that it's hello each time. That's because we never actually change it, we just keep it at hello. But it tells us what the value is. If the value did change, we would see the change appear so we can know exactly what a value is at any point. And this is useful because sometimes values change and you don't even realize. So breakpoints and watches are quite useful for debugging. Join me coming up next. We're going to continue our look at debugging. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.